We're on the stage of the biggest hall at the International Convention Centre in Birmingham and we're getting ready to try and set an unbreakable world record for the most people ever to play one piano. The world record currently is either 20 or 21 people, I'm not quite sure. So we thought we'd start by trying to break that and we're going to have 30 children play a piece that we've commissioned from the composer Martin Riley, who's based here in Birmingham. And to do that, we've built a platform so that six of them can lie on top of the piano and the other 24 are squeezed together. They can only just get to the piano because it's so tight for space. But maybe somebody could beat us. Maybe somebody would do 31 and we'd lose it. So we thought if we could get one person per note, there are 88 notes on the piano. So if we could play the piano with 88 people, we'd have an unbreakable world record. Ours forever. The piece itself did set many challenges. Uh, the mechanisms don't play when you want them to, and some of them, you'll drop a ball down and it'll hit the bottom, the man falls down, and that's three seconds. So things inevitably are gonna be a bit out of time here and there. So instead of making that a problem, make that, um, make that an asset. So things that go crazy and out of time become a feature of the piece, and then certain things that are in time, where we use the mechanisms that can do that. So there's a lot of swapping around of mechanisms on certain notes and on others. So it set many challenges in that. Before Christmas, we went into the schools taking a kit of parts that we invented so they could make a mechanism to play a chime bar across the table. And in groups of four or five, they did that. And then within the class, they played a scale or a little piece of music with the mechanisms they'd invented. So from that, we then started realising the mechanisms would have to be a bit more elaborate. And in particular, if they would need a pivot or something to pull against, then there would have to be a floor, there had to be an interface, and then it really exploded. In total, 35 schools and around about 2,500 children invented a mechanism to play the piano. So we received over 2,500 designs. The foundation of all the mechanisms is a brilliant invention by Chris Cleaver, who's our chief engineer, who worked out that we had to have a floor plan for where each mechanism could touch the floor so they didn't interfere with each other and a standardised interface. So he invented something which looks like an old style typewriter and to make each note work you can either pull or push or land on the key of the typewriter and that makes the note play. So each of the different mechanisms that the children invented uh, has to connect somehow to pull, push or land on one of those notes or explode. So one of the most noisy mechanisms, uh, the child uh, had the idea that there should be a balloon which contains a marble. So the player pricks the balloon with a stick with a pin on it. The ball drops into a funnel and it swirls around for a time. We can't predict how long it's going to take. Then it drops into a marble run and eventually hits a lever which causes the piano to play. I never thought there would be that many people. I'm glad everything went okay and that will and that is going to be what's gonna stay with me. I saw the mechanism that I designed and all I could do was this. Yeah. It was <laughs> it's a giant hand, it's like this big. It took ages it to paint it. it really proud, very proud for, for the children of Abbey but also for those other children from all those other primary schools. And I hope for the um, the 
the thinkers behind this whole project. I hope they're really proud of what they've done today. It will inspire our next generation of artists and musicians and engineers. To bring together music and engineering like that is really incredible. I mean, the imagination of those children, you know, was just something to behold. And of course, it makes them interested in the engineering and in that sort of scientific side. And in the music as well, they get very interested in music as well. So it's an ideal project. Our wider work is all about climate change. Uh, we know that there's no magic technology that's going to take climate change away and the economics and politics that we live with today isn't creating a solution. So we actually we have to have an act of collective imagination to think about how we want to live fulfilling lives with much less energy. We set out with this project aiming to inspire a generation of young engineers and I'm completely convinced that the result is that they've inspired us. So if we can use this as a foundation of expanding our confidence in the imaginations that the children have reminded us we have, that would be a wonderful legacy.